G'day guys, Ronnie Lowell, Four Wheeling Australia, in the sandy and windy bloody St. Lancelin here. We're in the dunes with the all new updated Toyota Prado 2020 version. We're going to put it for its paces, so in this video, you're going to see the vehicle on the outside, the inside, what it's capable of on the sand, my thoughts and opinions as we drive around, and I'm also going to teach you how to use this vehicle for four wheel driving. Stay tuned. 2020 Land Cruiser 150 Prado GXL. This is a full list of everything covered. If you want to skip to any of those points, just go down to the bar at the bottom and you can jump around. And just a quick shout out and thanks to Galleria Toyota for having the guts to lend me a stock vehicle and take off road. Let's get into it. Today, we are going to let these tyres down to 15 psi, which is ideal for sand driving. You shouldn't need to take more out. Uh, being a stock vehicle, it's quite light. 15 psi will keep you out of trouble. All right guys, welcome to my mobile office for the day inside the Prado. How do we get this thing into four wheel drive? This is something I'm going to show in every single car review that I do. So we're in the Prado. How do we get this into four-wheel drive? Well, it's actually in four-wheel drive all the time. It's a constant four-wheel drive, which translates to all-wheel drive. So it's not true four-wheel drive. How do we get it to four-wheel drive? True four-wheel drive. There is a center diff lock button down here. We press that. Icon comes up here. Now we are in true four-wheel drive. And this particular model also has a rear diff locker, which is down here. So we can press that button. And we are now going to get our rear diff locker engaged, which also is illuminated on the screen. But more importantly, how do we get into four wheel drive low range? First, we have to lock the center diff. Then we have to apply our foot brake, move the automatic transmission to neutral. Then we twist the dial, push in, twist to L4. And now we have low range four wheel drive. Now we can go back to drive, reverse or park and off we go. We now have low range gearing. Now to get out of low range, we need to go, come to a stop, go back to neutral, turn the dial back to full high. Now we are out of four wheel drive low range. Say we've finished here at the Lanson Sand Dunes, we wanna go home, we wanna hit the highway, the blacktop. Then we just make sure that we unlock the center diff. That is all you need to know. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. When we put it in low range, the Prado automatically disengages pre-collision avoidance, but you don't need that at low range speed anyway. First impressions, straight in the sand, it's all lumpy, you know, and all we can feel all this stuff. But having coils front and rear, this is amazing. It is so smooth. This is the smoothest vehicle I've driven on the sand so far, and I've only just got on the sand. I've driven quite a few vehicles as well recently, so that says a lot. This is so smooth, so comfy. But having leather seats, everything slides around on your seats here. All my camera bags in the back here are sliding around like you wouldn't believe. The biggest and steepest and meanest hill we could find. We're, let's go down to second, let's go down to first gear low. And here we go. In first gear low. Wow, okay, this is pretty steep. <laughs> I'm glad all the gears in the other vehicle. So this is just, uh, let's go up a gear. Second gear low. It caught it as it sped up, so that's pretty cool. But no downhill assist required on that one. Oh, she's soft down here. Woohoo! Yeah, that soft patch. There we go. And we're out. Hey. 
One thing that impresses me about this vehicle is that wheelbase is, it's like a mid wheelbase. Some people consider it a long wheelbase, but compared to like a dual cab U, it's a mid wheelbase. So I can turn on a dime pretty much and it just handles these tight little turns really well, especially in like all this sort of soft sand sections, I can actually turn and it still just, just does its thing. That's pretty awesome. Here we go. Might gear down for this one. Whoa, okay. That is steep. This could be doable going up. Okay. I'm gonna say it right now. This is the most fun full drive I've driven on sand to date so far. Oh, so close. All right, so when you don't make it up June and you're going backwards, that is probably one of the most scary part for, for most people. For me, I'm just so used to dunes. Um, it's just a matter of just keep keep your vehicle moving Do not hit the brakes if you hit the brakes and your wheels are slightly turned That's when you're up in trouble because then your car goes sideways and you could end up in trouble Those bits you see me driving on an angle Don't try that Don't try that When you do those kind of things you've got to have speed and momentum to do it and you've got to know what you're doing Otherwise that can be quite dangerous We got it, we got it. I reckon it'll still, I probably could have climbed another meter before we run out, run out of steam. You could probably see my face out. Wasn't sure if I'd quite got it yet. It's now that time folks, for a quick whip around. This is the 150 Prado, the 2020 version. Honestly, the shape hasn't changed. It looks exactly the same as its predecessor. But under here, there's some different stuff going on. Gas struts. Not used to seeing that on a Toyota. We have a 2.8 litre turbo diesel. What's different with the motor? Well, bigger injectors, bigger turbo. It's got less lag. It's got 20 extra kilowatts. It's got 50 extra Newton meters of torque. It does get pretty punchy on the highway. It felt pretty good. Around the dunes and low range in particular, plenty of power. It is a DPF version, so as all diesel models are nowadays, DPF's in there, so it's pretty quiet. And I think that's about all you need to know about the engine. It's a badge. You can see it's not embossed. Inside this badge is an active radar, so you can do radar cruise control. I've got that in my own Hilux, it's pretty cool. So you sit behind the car and you set it to cruise control and basically, if the car in front of you varies the speed, your vehicle varies its speed too. So you don't have to keep turning your cruise control off. Let's talk about these black donuts being the tires and the wheels. I call them rims. 17 inch, I believe these are 30 and a half inch tires. Now, 17 inch, that's a good size. You don't want to go too much bigger than that. So I'm pleased this is coming with 17 inch rims. As far as the tires go, look, once these tires wear out and you're gonna upgrade your tire or change the tire later on, I suggest going for a size bigger that will fit and possibly think about an all-terrain. So it's a bit better off-road. But apart from that, it's going pretty good on these. Let's talk about stuff you can't see underneath the vehicle. We'll start with suspension. Coils on every single of the four corners. The front is IFS as it has been for a long time and the rear is still a solid axle on coil suspension. And that's why it handles, not because of a solid axle, but because of the coils, it handles this rugged stuff really well. It's so comfortable in that vehicle. Much more comfortable than the Hilux because the Hilux is so light. This has a bit of weight to it. It's evenly distributed as well. Really good on sand. Fuel tanks. Yes, there are tanks, two tanks in fact. 87 litre tank and a 63 litre tank, totaling 150 litres. The fuel economy in this vehicle on the sheet of paper says 
However, driving this today, driving on the dunes and all that, we're getting about, well, close to nine, but we are thrashing it around on the dunes. Parking assist. The GXL only has parking assist on the rear, which surprises me a little bit. So if you want front parking assist, you need to get the VX model or the Kakadu. That's pretty much the whip around. Now there is a question that's, or more of a debate really, that goes on. And that is, wherever a Prado is, in fact, a land cruiser. Let's get to that now. The first generation of Land Cruiser Prado was 1984 to 1995. This was not sold officially in Australia. People did buy them from overseas. So that first Prado was actually part of the 70 series. It was a 78 series Land Cruiser, the 70 series family. In 1990, the Land Cruiser 78 got removed from the 70 series family and start a thing on its own, the Land Cruiser Prado. It was mainly separated to compete against the highly successful Mitsubishi Pajero in the big size SUV long wheelbase wagons. So anyone who's debating it, this is why it's called a Land Cruiser Prado. But wait, there's more. The second series, or the second generation I should say, the 95 series Prado was first released officially in Australia as the first Prado in 1996. And that went all the way to 2003 when Generation 3 came out, which ended 2009. And then came the Prado 150. And now we are 2020, it's still the 150. One thing I haven't spoken about is towing capacity for this vehicle. It used to be two and a half ton, now it's actually three ton for the auto version. Now, many people believe that it's an upgrade in the suspension and the chassis that's allowed it to do so. It's actually not. Doing a bit of research, what they've done is they've upgraded the motor and the gearbox. They've done some tweaking there to help with the thermal overload or to help with the thermal load of the driveline. That's why. Here's the real soft stuff. Here we go. Wow! Just pulls out of the sand. That is quite surprising. This is really thick here. And it just Active traction come in there, A track system. Wow, that's, that's really fascinating. Fifteen psi though, fifteen psi. It's all about the tire pressure. How does the Prado feel on the highway? Feels pretty good actually. It's definitely heavier than my Hilux. Now, I drove my Hilux, which is a 2020 model as well, to go and pick up this Prado. It's now behind me. Chris is using that as a camera car today. So, compar comparably to com comparing this to the Hilux, it feels heavier. Now, you can't really compare the two vehicles. Well, you can in a way, but one's an apple, one's an orange, basically. They got the same motor, so it's a 2.8 litre, so I'm familiar with the motor, familiar with the gearbox. Um, sits really well. One trick that I have learnt is when you're driving the Prado, is when you're about going about 100 kilometres per hour, 110, if you back off your accelerator, it'll then kick up into 6th gear. Once you've caught 6th gear, the revs drop right down and then you can slowly or gently accelerate up to maintain your speed and it will then stay in sixth gear. Now the important part, <clears throat> now the reason why I'm bringing this up is the fact that you are going to save on fuel if you do that. It's a good way to save on fuel. <coughs> Alright, we've got a bit of a doozy of a hill here. I'm going to use the uh, rear locker 
just to test it out. Just I would normally use a rear locker in this situation. Most of the day, I've relied on the A track system, so um, action traction something aid on your screen. I forgot what it's called. So many different abbreviations of so many different things. All right. So if we're good to go, we're good to go. Yeah, got the thumbs up. All right, here we go. This ain't gonna be too easy, I don't think. Eats it up. Eats it up. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Just in case there's a few new people to the channel here and you're new to full driving, you came here because you're looking at the Prado because you are looking, is it a car you want to buy, etc, etc. Well, I can drop something in here for you guys. Not about if you want to buy a Prado, but if you have a stock full drive, you need to bring a tire deflator, a shovel, and something to inflate your tires with. Unless you're somewhere local, you can fill up your tires at the service station. Just letting you know, I thought I'd drop that in because that's the biggest thing we see out here. Um, us regular full drivers that frequent out in the bush, we generally see people bogged because they haven't lowered the tyres down and they don't know what they're doing. So there'll be some helpful tips in here too. Let's continue. As far as the 150 Prado goes with interior, it's pretty damn sleek, I gotta say full lever and guess what the seats have air conditioning in the actual seats so if you get a sweaty back you can get cooled down if you get a cold back you can warm it up the only thing is probably lacking a little bit are charge points this interior compared to the Hilux is way better it actually resembles the 200 series a lot Let's talk about space inside the Prado. Driver side, I think I already spoke about that on the way in here. Heaps of room, very comfy seat. I'm not a big fan of leather, but with air conditioning inside the seats, I'm loving it. Passenger side, heaps of room. All right, I wanna charge my phone. Where do I go to do that? Where do I charge my phone? Okay, there's a cigarette lighter plug there. Back seats, all right, the middle seat, definitely not for an adult. Um, it's a bit pointy, pointy on my rear end, I gotta say. Let's try the side seats. Oh yeah, quite a bit of room. This seat's all the way back as well. We have air conditioning functions here as well. No way, we have air conditioning in the seats as well in the back. There you go. Charge points, do we have anything? Yes, there's one cigarette lighter plug in the back here. Apart from that, that is it. And then we do have two seats in the back there as well, which I would say would be for kids only. You're gonna struggle to put adults in those seats. I was concerned about the weight before we started driving in the sand, but it actually helps the vehicle drive. We did a hill just before, with the Prado first, and then with the Hilux. The Prado made an easier job out of it. I will have to say, the strong point for this vehicle is sand driving. Out of the box, straight on the sand, really good. It's actually more fun to drive than my Hilux. I have more fun in this vehicle. It's weighted really good for the sand. So as a family four-wheel drive, I reckon it's a pretty good option out there, but I don't want to sway your decision. So I would like to know, would you consider one of these as an SUV for a family? Because let's face it, the target audience for this vehicle is families with kids, with dogs, families with kids and dogs. 
and with the kids, dogs and cats. Just a quick thank you to Galleria Toyota for having the guts to lend me a stock four-wheel drive and take out here. And of course, if you want to test drive the Prada yourself, head down to Galleria Toyota if you're local. By the way, have you seen the videos with the Hilux? Much more extensive reviews with this because I own the vehicle, I drive it every second day. Every other day, I drive a Land Cruiser. Thanks for watching guys. Make sure you guys hit me up in the comments with what vehicles you'd like to see me drive in future and any other makes and model brands out there. If you're brave enough, lend me a car so I can take it for a test drive. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.